In 2005, a very strange toy line was imported to the West. A series of snap together model kits that formed little mecha guys not unlike a gunpla kit. But rather than featuring wild posability and detailed construction, well, mostly they'd just a shoot at a marbles. Bop, pew, pew! Hi, I'm Jack Cuso, and this is the second beat -em on video in a two-part series. I spoke in humorous detail about the history and evolution of Battle beat -em on in part one. If you want the full picture of beat -em on which you should, pause the video and go back to watch episode one. It's linked uh, everywhere in the description and the... And after you watch that video, come back here so we can find out what happened after Hasbro's version of Battle beat -em on was canceled in the West, and every single bizarre bizarre twist and turn that happened after the fact. Well, hey there, sleepyhead. How are you doing? Taking a little nap? This is the coolest sponsorship I've ever had. Mantasleep gave me money to talk about their incredibly high-tech sleep masks. I've been using sleep masks for years, and I hate every single one that I've tried. Like, this one is really soft, but it barely blocks out any light. And this one looks wizardly as hell, but the strap digs into my ears and both of them squish my eyes, which sucks. Sometimes I want to sleep when there's lights on because people are working, or maybe I just want a little nap during the day. Don't I deserve that? Haven't I been a good little boy who deserves a little nap? Well, Manta Sleep is a vehemently pro-nap company and supporters of the pro-nap movement. Naps are good for you, and Manta Sleep has a ton of designs with features for all different kinds of sleepers. Masks that cool and soothe your face, weighted masks for comfort, a silk mask for perfect softness, and most of their masks are 100% blackout with comfortable, adjustable straps and adjustable eye cups that put zero pressure on your eyes or lashes. I've been sleeping with the Manta Sleep Sleep Mask Pro for a couple weeks now and I can fully open my eyes in the middle of the day and I'm still in pitch darkness. Advanced darkness. I love it, I use it every day, and I have no complaints at all. So, use the link in my description and use the discount code JET at checkout to get 10% off. Thanks Manta Sleep. Why exactly did Battle Beat'em On flop in the US after only a year? It was such a well-designed line with cute, appealing figures, and the direct hit battle system, unique to Battle Beat'em On, was perhaps the most fun Beat'em On had ever been. I'll admit, I wasn't paying attention to battling toys or hobby anime or anything like that in 2005 because I was seven and Bakugan hadn't come out yet and Star Wars Episode Three had just come out and I was in very deep. But the easiest thing to assume about the cancellation is that the beat -em on toys just didn't sell well. However, despite the weak reception, the single year launch of Battle beat -em on was not the end of beat -em on's story in the West. Beat -em on! <laughs> you wanna win? You gotta be fast! Faster! Faster! <laughs> I don't feel so... Wow! Okay, uh... Wow, yeah, if anything makes me want to buy your cool action toys, it's seeing the little CGI versions vomit marbles. That's what the boys like. That's what brings the boys to the yard to buy your toys. This is beat -em on Crossfire, a new series, not only a proper reboot, but a complete redesign of the part system to focus entirely on cores and swappable parts. The little naked Zero System guys, whack. Model kit construction, whack. Direct hit battles, whack. The way the body parts directly affect performance, whack. The core change system, it's tight as f <laughs> I don't actually think any of that, sorry. That's just my impression of Hasbro in 2013. I think it's obvious enough that these toys are a vast departure from the Battle beat -em on toys. The concept is the same, but the bones of the toy line and the vibes of it all are completely different. Specifically, the vibes now are rad, heavy metal, edgelord crap. This beat -em on isn't a mech, he's a bear. This isn't a Gundam, he's a scorpion. And any beat -em on that does still look like a mech is absurdly spiky. They're so spiky. They're not cute in the same way that Battle was. It's like they were trying to make chibi designs into something edgy, and it just uh, it doesn't hit the same buttons for me. There's a sort of 
smoothed over, massaged, streamlined feeling to beat him on Crossfire that really reminds me of Beyblade Metal Fury compared to classic Beyblade, or to be less charitable, classic Bionicle compared to Hero Factory. Oh, 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 oh. It's just a different design sensibility, and while I don't think one is inherently better than the other, there are pros and cons to each system, and we're gonna talk about all of them. But how did things come so far? What happened in the eight years between these two toy lines? Are you ready for a new kind of action? You can't beat Beat Us Spirit! With cooler weapons! It's a beat -a -man. Stronger fighters! So, you wanna play rock, huh? Baku Q hit! Crash Beat Em On! <laughs> After Battle beat -em on soared in Japan and flopped in the West, its sequel series, Crash beat -em on launched in Japan and flopped in Japan. You see, they decided to add gun parts to the beat -em ons full-on barrels and triggers and tactical grips. Yeah, there just so happens to be a little Marble Man inside there somewhere, in theory, but mostly they are guns, and Japan, famously, is not big on those. Personally, I think the Crash beat -em on toys look awesome, and I would love to get a better look at them someday if I bought any. The series didn't do well, and it was never exported anywhere other than Japan, as far as I know. Maybe Korea. After that, beat -em on kind of slept for a while, and then eventually relaunched in Japan years later as beat -em on Crossfight, all following the explosion of Beyblade Metal Fusion, following the explosion of Bakugan. There were some uh, little penguin beat -em ons in the middle, but, uh... I didn't... Pen Pen Energy doesn't really interest me, personally. Either way, Crossfight did blow up in Japan, and with Bakugan and Beyblade's success indicating new market trends, Hasbro slapped their logo on the box and imported it to America. You know, in the same way you can import your dead wife's soul from the depths of Hades into a necromanced body, only for her to come back... different. Beat em on Crossfire toys consist of a central core upon which arms and limbs and heads can attach, which actually works the same way as Zero Two. No, not that one. Season 2 of Battle beat -em on had a thing called Zero Two System. It was basically exactly the same as the Zero System, except there were different cores and the heads were swappable. This works the same way as that. But unlike the Zero System and the Zero Two System, the basic parts don't affect performance aside from maybe affecting ergonomics. Instead, the cores themselves have different strengths and weaknesses built in. Like this guy that has wheels for rapid fire. Or this one with a trigger in a... it's got a... kind of a shape to it. The accessories for Crossfire aren't like the ones for Battle beat -em on where every piece had a visual impact to accompany the functionality. Crossfire is a bit more crude, a bit less aesthetically focused because the figures are such distinct characters. My custom Battle beat -em on figure was really easy to put together from several other figures to get exactly the colors and look that I wanted, as well as performance accessories that only make it look even better. Meanwhile, customization for Crossfire feels a little bit more pointless and a little bit more drab. I used to be into Crossfire when it came out. I bought many of these sets as a 15-year-old boy child, but the most customization I ever did was putting a rapid-fire core in Lightning Scorpio to, to make it so that it can, uh, this, this the different core, uh, works in a... What you could, you do, you wait. It's supposed to make it more rapid fire, but does it? Do the different cores actually perform that differently? When I got all of my old Crossfire stuff out, I did an excessive amount of performance testing. But it's, it's all kind of questionable. You see, I don't remember what any of these cores are supposed to do. I did tests of accuracy, speed, and power, and man, I can't tell the difference between many of them. Different beat -em ons do different things, but I can't tell why they do different things. Like, Lightning Dravice is a rapid fire type because he's got these little wheels, sure. But what makes Lightning Scorpio's core a rapid fire? core. I couldn't find a meaningful performance difference in speed between anything other than Dravice. Meanwhile, Scorpio's core was by far the most precise despite being a rapid-fire core. 
In strength testing with the puck thing, I couldn't get any beat em on to perform any consistently better than any other. Sometimes adding the accessories can make for meaningful differences, but that's the accessories, not the cores. You can't tell by looking at a beat em on what its core is supposed to do, and the differences are way too minor to feel noticeable. The only really obvious one I could figure out was this figure, Thunder Drakian. He has a rubber strip on the lower part of the core that applies forward spin to the marble, which meaningfully adds to power and causes some interesting effects in terms of rotation. But it comes in a playset, and the box does nothing to explain this aside from labeling it as an Axella core, which means nothing to anyone. Meanwhile, any accessory that you add to a battle beat em on drastically changes how it feels. You can actually hear the difference between Cobalt Saber with and without the power wings. But beyond all that, beat em on Crossfire returned to the same problem as the first Gunpla kit like beat em on series, Super Beat em on. The biggest problem that I encountered as a child who bought a bunch of these things, which was, to put it simply, what am I supposed to do with them? There's no battle system! Direct hit battles, the coolest part of Battle Beatemon, are gone, and nothing was added to replace them. There wasn't a multi purpose arena like Battle Beatemon had, so regardless of how well the figures perform, without any specific games, I never knew what to do with my figures. I bought them, I collected a bunch so I could get the cool barrel and the cool magazine and get the red parts that I wanted, but once I had my perfect Beatemon assembled, I couldn't really do anything else. I couldn't play against anyone, so I had no way to pitch it to my brother so he would play with me. So I was just left sitting in the kitchen floor like an old sack of potatoes, shooting the little included targets and scattering marbles all over the place. You can hand any kid a Beyblade, and they can rip it and get right into a quick top fight. Anyone can learn how to play Bakugan and monster fight with other kids. But beat em on Crossfire's play pattern might as well begin and end at mini bowling with one painfully notable exception. Chapter 5! Beat him on! I can smell your fear! That's your breath! Ready! An all new way to battle! Dominate by blasting the red blocks first! In the beat em on world, every shot is one blast closer to victory! So much action, it'll make your head spin! You can collect all the figures and scan to unlock them in the new free beat em on app! New Break Bomber Battlefield comes as shown. Other figures each sold separately. Ask a parent to go to beatemonbattles.com for app details. With beat em on, you can beat a man! Ah oh boy, the uh, the Break Bomber Battlefield was basically Crossfire's capstone toy. Like a Maxis Dragonoid or uh, this big thing from Mechard. It gives you a way to compete head to head, yes, but it's momentarily entertaining at best, and it takes a long time to set up. You shoot your beta marbles at the blocks, the blocks lower, and whoever gets the most red blocks onto the opponent's side wins. It works fine, but it's frenzy based chaos gameplay at best. The plastic is incredibly cheap, and if you don't have hard floors, you're kinda screwed. By design, it forces you to play on the kitchen floor or the kitchen table, and it is a loud, loud game. It never feels super strategic or skill-based, unlike the grounded face-off of direct hit battles, or the intense back and forth of beat em on Invasion, where you, you know, you shoot the puck guy. The little puck. But that's literally all Crossfire ever gave us. I don't like it very much, and it's not an- Oh, ew, no, ew, what are those? Oh. Oh no, they look like carnival games. That's not, no, that's not good. I want skill-based combat, not a $20 miniature Disneyland ride. But unfortunately, the marketing of Crossfire exclusively surrounded the Break Bomber Battlefield. I never saw these other arenas in the store, and the commercials made it look like the game of beat em on was to hit the fun blocks with your fun balls, which made the figures and customization feel really secondary. Because the stuff that comes with the playset is plenty enough to play Break Bomber with. There's not really any reason to buy the other stuff. It doesn't really make it better. The accessories don't really make Break Bomber any more fun or give you any more of a chance at doing good. Look, look, here, here's an example. Watch how these two beat em on commercials give completely different ideas of the toy line's focus. An all new way to battle! Dominate by blasting the red blocks first! In the beat em on world, every shot is one blast closer to victory! So much action, it'll make your head spin! 
からトミーパワーのドラッシュ連射のドラバイス B ファイトパワーショットでぶっ倒せ超連射でクリアしようクロスファイト B だな192以上の改造ができる改造 Z That last commercial, that is how you market to young boys. Take notes, you big wig corporate suits. Firstly, the commercial starts with a man shouting, POWER! Which is promising. And then, in rapid fire, you see many features and distinctions of each figure, like the forward spin feature of this guy, or how this guy can shoot super fast. You get some quick examples, a bunch of cool techie stats, and then right when you think the commercial is over, they show you some rad accessories right at the end. Some kind of quick reload clip thing and other accessories that make my beat em on into a gun. It makes all of these toys look so cool and so hardcore. It's perfect marketing. But, but this nonsense? Whack! You know what? Now that we're talking about Japanese Crossfire, I think I'm actually gonna say some nice things for all the Crossfire fans. <laughs> Sorry, I've been really mean to Crossfire. It's not actually that bad. Keep watching. Even though the parts are pretty much just aesthetic and don't change performance, the core system figures feel so solid compared to zero system figures. The parts swap out using plastic bolts that screw in, so I'm never worried about breaking anything. Meanwhile, Zero System figures are kind of falling apart constantly, and the reliance on stickers sucks. Now, counterpoint, because of the whole bolts thing, crossfight figures don't feel like action figures at all. It's just a solid chunk of plastic, whereas like, battle beat em on figures kind of have like some posability to them, like you can move their feet and their arms and so on, which is interesting. It's not bad. It's not a bad way to do it. But getting back on track, Japanese Crossfight Beatemon had way more accessories and way more customizability than Crossfire did. Gadgety stuff like the little clip magazines that I never saw, and then as it went on, they actually did make figure parts that would affect performance. Stuff like the emblem system, letting you manually add pressure to the hold parts to increase the power, or a million other effects. Crazy magazines, more variety in cores, parts that perform vastly differently. Some of this stuff is insanely cool, but we didn't get that. All we got was our undead wife over in the corner, speaking riddles to our cat in an eldritch tongue. Surely if all of this had been imported to the US, it would have been a success, right? Surely there's hope for beat em on yet if they just import it correctly, right? <laughs> Wrong! So yeah, Crossfire didn't have direct hit battles. That sucks. A lot. But all the same, for most of Beatemon's existence, the direct hit battle system didn't exist. The core play of Beatemon has always been target shooting and challenges, making up your own games. And perhaps that's cool, because it makes it the only brand in the genre that can be comfortably enjoyed by an only child whose friends aren't interested. That's a plus on one hand, but head-to-head -head play as a core mechanic does encourage kids to try to get their friends into it. Turning your customers into little mobile advertisements by necessity is the main way that TCGs and battle toys spread, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Direct hit battles were a one-off thing in Battle Beatemon, and as cool as I think it was, it clearly didn't help the brand succeed in the West. Crossfire, at its essence, in a child's eyes, should have been no different to Battle Beatemon, right? In terms of function, in terms of play, it was still the little guys that shoot the marbles and have the accessories just like Battle Beatemon. But Battle Beatemon had the model kit problem, so maybe that balances it out by adding a different reason for failure. But if the whole model kit problem was the main cause of failure, wouldn't Crossfire have done better than Battle Beatemon? Especially since Crossfire was released into what should have been a fertile post Bakugan Beyblade boom marketplace with Skylanders kind of on the decline. But then again, Crossfire had awful marketing and an underwhelming show, while Battle Beatemon still failed despite having a really unique anime and commercials really similar to the Japanese tech style of advertising. So why didn't either Beatemon launch succeed? Did I spend all of this time to research a hopeless toy line? Is Beatemon just... bad? Nah, I don't think Beatemon's bad. Sorry for the dramatic cliffhanger. It's it's not bad. It's just impossible. 
As we've been moving throughout this long history, you've seen how the original Beatamani evolved into what it is within Japanese culture, iterating and innovating according to the demands of the market. Without that long history as a foundation, how do you market Beatamon in the West? I guess according to Hasbro, you make the little CGI robot guys who vomit marbles. <laughs> But even if they've done a better job, I still think it's an impossible task. The brand Yokai Watch encountered the same problem when they tried importing it. Mega hit franchise in Japan, all about a kid who can see spirits and creatures with a cool watch. But Yokai Watch is built on top of Japanese folklore and very specific culturalisms. More specifically cultural than, you know, Bomberman, but it's the same issue. Shows like Ultraman and Kamen Rider are similarly difficult to import because of how enmeshed their evolution is is within Japan and Japanese culture. Even though each season or series has its own beginning and ending, the concepts pretty much always build on what's been done before. But kids in the West don't know what's been done before, so it's a lot harder to market. If the Marvel Cinematic Universe had been exclusive to the US, could you import it to Japan starting with Ant-Man 3 and expect it to take off? How would you make a commercial for that? How do we convince a bunch of 10-year-old Japanese boys that Paul Rudd's Ant-Man is a cool dude who you should really get to know? God, Try importing IHOP to Japan and explain to them that this, this twisted result of a decades-long game of pancake telephone, is supposed to be a breakfast restaurant. Counterexample, Bakugan doesn't encounter this problem because it's a concept designed from scratch to sell rather than a concept that evolved into what it is. Same for Beyblade and many other toy brands like Hot Wheels. Those toys have all gotten better over the years to a certain extent, but the core concept remains simple and enduring. Beatemon, the simple concept of a marble launching guy still evolved like a game of telephone, with many people iterating and innovating, adding to the concept while letting other elements slip away. Start with a little video game guy dropping bombs, and eventually you arrive at. Oh, hang on. No, no, hang on. What is this? No, 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 no. Target. Different challenges to compete in. Play it yourself or battle with your friends. Motorba! What's Bottle Man? There's a Bottle Man now? They shoot bottle caps now? They just keep going. They keep changing it. They keep adding stuff. Someone hang up the phone, please. To bring it back to beat em on Crossfire and hopefully wrap things up, I don't blame Hasbro for not knowing how to market beat em on to children in the strange era of 2013. Though it is a little bit sad, right? There may be nothing in the concept of beat em on that's particularly gripping when you explain it, but the toys became what they are thanks to years of natural selection. Arriving at something that's actually very cute and very appealing and very fun to play with if you get into it. beat em on truly is fun, but you can't convince people of that from scratch. Without cultural context and without history, unless you can explain what makes something fun in a few quick sentences, it's just not going to last very long. Maybe I'll make a bottle man video. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Click like, click subscribe, bip it a bell, and pop a bop over and click a little Patreon subscription for me. Hey, I had to buy toys for this video. And there's some exclusive videos on Patreon of me building some beat em on. So check that out if you're curious. This is Jet Kuso, and I'll see you next time. Hoop! Wow, we have some new patrons. Thanks, Task Force Neat and Ice Feather for joining as Titan patrons, and some new base patrons, Gaddock Tiege, a magic user, Jaden, and Logan Nyros. Hope I'm saying all of those right. And of course, thanks to my existing patrons, uh, like my diamond patrons, Chell and Immortal Blank, my Titan patrons, Shivitis, Sierra 107, Gusano, Logan Hill, Big Chunga 69, Razu Ryan, Pleco Pleco, and Roman Lewandowski, and my hyper patrons, Gavin Greenlee, David, Trouble, Dusk Anthro, Merrick, and Madorios. Thank you guys so much.